and divide your attention between inside and outside. There's a lot to look at. And lead it with a little bit of power. And remember, we need about 2,000 RPM. We're getting a little slow there. 2,000, 2,100. Add more power. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. More power. Right rudder. There we go. All right, relax the back pressure a little bit. Let it gain some speed. Car beat off. There you go, now you're getting stabilized. We're within about 40 feet of our altitude. We are at 50 knots, 2100 RPM. We are in slow flight dirty. Okay, that was a lot, it's all a at lot. once. It is. So Derek told me I needed to get a knee board so that I could write things down during our flights. I'm heading over to Fallon Aviation to get board right now. Hey. Hi there. Hey, uh, Derek told me to get a knee board. Do you have anything like that? We have lots of knee boards. Great. Did you have anything in mind in particular? Uh, cheap and inexpensive. Cheap easy. and VFR. expensive. Yeah. VFR. Getting your private. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is probably your best option. Uh, this is the ASA KB1. It's just a basic clipboard, brushed aluminum. Sweet. And it has quick reference information on the clipboard for your VFR. Perfect. I'll take it. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Getting the stuff. It's time for lesson two. Today's action, slow flight. Let's go do some slow flight. She's ready. Propeller area clear. Ignition, here we go. One hand on the throttle. Yep. There we go. It's been said that you should fly the airplane all the way to the tie downs. That means even during taxi to and from the runway. Here, you will see me struggle to input the correct crosswind correction during taxi. All right, so the wind is going that way, so I want to dive away. Is that right? Affirmative. Dive, dive away from the away tail. would be this way, right? Yep. Uh, was it this way? I can't. <laughs> this way. Yeah, yes. This way. Okay, got it. All right, here we go. At the end of the runway, we perform a procedure called engine run-up. Run-up is the last opportunity we have to check the operation of the engine before we pull out onto the runway and depend on it to carry us into the air successfully. Follow along here as I do engine run-up. All right, throttle 1700 RPM, here we go. Seventeen hundred engine instruments check. Everything looks good here. Tax set. I see oil pressure, oil temperature looks good. Ammeter also check. Looks like it's solid. Magnetos. We're gonna do a right check. Here we go. And one, two. Back to both. Left. Back to both. Within 50. Uh, vacuum gauge is where. That's this guy here. He looks good. Carb heat. We're gonna pull it on. Okay, we're gonna go throttle to idle. The engine continues to run, car heat off, and throttle back to 1000. And Auburn Towers, that's not 739 or Yankee Hotel at runway 9, left, ready for takeoff. So 739 Yankee Hotel, Auburn Tower, right turn approved, runway 9 or left, clear for takeoff, jet traffic on a four mile final. Uh, Right turn approved, runway 9 to left, clear for takeoff, and we'll make it quick. Great Stay job. Clear the final before entering, visually. Yep. ATC does make mistakes Go ahead and continue to attack to runway 9 left, what are your intentions? Alright, show me a nice takeoff. Here we go. North through Patrick or northwest around Patrick? Ready to go. Thank you. Alright, so. Airspeed's alive. Engine is 
instruments look good, and 55 knots, here we go. Every time I start to say something, you just do it, so you must be studying. Okay, 200 feet coming up. And let's trim. Best climb, best climb 73 knots, right? Uh, be, yep, best rate of climb, DY, 73. This is Dr. Hill, Tom, make a right turn pass over the middle of runway 5. Right turn over runway 5. 7390 Nice job. Good job handling that. That's a strange clearance to get. In the last episode, I mentioned that there are designated practice areas in our area. This map shows where they are. Today's lesson will be performed mostly in Hotel West and Hotel East. So what I'll have you do is I'll have you get me in the practice area. I'll have you perform the turns, the clearing turns, and the free maneuver check after you do we'll do cruise check, clearing turns, free maneuver check, and then I'll take the aircraft, I'll show you slow flight clean. Okay. And the takeoff configuration flaps up, and then you'll do it twice, and then we'll switch to the slow flight turn. As I mentioned before, today's lesson is all about slow flight. We will be covering two different types of slow flight. The first is called slow flight clean. Slow flight clean means the aircraft is configured for cruise flight. And in our Skyhawk, that means the flaps are up. And we're going to be establishing slow flight at 55 knots indicated airspeed. The second will be called slow flight dirty. And that means we've configured the aircraft for approach and landing at an airport. For our Skyhawk, that means we'll have the flaps fully extended, which gives us another five knots. So now we can slow from 55 in knots indicated airspeed down to 50 knots indicated airspeed. So slow flight clean is flaps up, configured for cruise. Slow flight dirty is flaps down, configured for landing. Got it? All right, here we go. And then after we do all those maneuvers, we'll proceed uh, back to the airport where we'll do some landings. And you'll get your first set of uh, landings. You got a little bit of aircraft experience, unlike other people. Uh, so since you've been around airplanes and, and you're very comfortable, we'll go ahead and start out with the touch and goes. Okay. As long as you feel comfortable with that. This okay. is a very calm day. Um, typically we'll start out with someone who's never been around an airplane before and I'll make them do full stop, land, taxi all the way back to the runway, take a second to collect their thoughts and calm themselves, and then we go up again and we'll do that three times. But since you've been around airplanes so much, um, I think you'll be just fine doing it right off the bat. Okay, good. Uh, we're at 2,500 feet, pitch power shrimp in that order. I'm going to have to keep working the power because we're accelerating a relative wind over the prop like you mentioned before. Uh, you've switched frequencies to yep. the... I will be on the practice area frequency monitoring for other instructors okay. out here. All, All right. right, let's do a... Uh, let's go ahead and do our clearing turns, clear the area, and we'll do our pre-maneuver checklist to make sure everything's ready, and then we'll do our slow flight. Okay, so for a clearing turn, I'm just going to turn 90 degrees to the left and then turn 90 degrees back to the right? That's correct. Okay. So I want you to turn, uh, pick a heading 90 degrees to the, to the left, which is about 160 heading. Look off your left, find a point out there that you're going to fly to, and okay. turn to that point. So clear the left and turn to the left. Right, here we go. And during our turn, a little rudder in there, a little left rudder, 30 degrees of bank, and we'll just kind of look outside. Now we're opening up this whole big view to us in the front that we can see up, in, uh, up above the aircraft and down below the aircraft and look for traffic in our area. Okay. All right, and watch to the right, clear to the right as you look to the right, and turn. And while you're turning in that direction, you're looking in that direction for traffic okay. all around you. You're looking constantly, dividing small sections of the air up uh, in your vision and scanning them momentarily for movement. Okay. Looks good. All right, cool. Now let's do a pre-maneuver checklist. Pre-maneuver checklist is uh, we're going to be a safe min minimum safe altitude. We're at 2,500 feet, so we verify. Mixture is set for full. Is that where we want it? Paper. Okay. Full landing lead is still on, so we're good. Landing light is on, so we're good. Okay. I'll take the aircraft. Okay, your aircraft. My controls. You have the controls. Thank you. All right, I'm going to select a cardinal heading and a point outside which to fly to during this maneuver. So that big square lake, those man-made lakes out there, we're going to use that as our starting point for the maneuver. Okay. I'm going to roll in, and it's going to be about... 
As Derek begins to demonstrate this slow flight, I'm going to put up another window right here that shows over the nose. And the reason for that is I want you to notice the difference from the top of the engine cowling to the horizon. You'll see there's a large gap there as we're in slow, as we're in cruise flight. But as we transition into slow flight, we have to increase the pitch angle to keep the airplane level without descending so that distance between those two is going to shrink. You'll see that. And as we transition out of slow flight, back into cruise flight, you'll see that gap get larger. So just, you'll see that right right here. Here it is. Uh, just keep an eye on that. To do that in this aircraft, practical application is you pull the power to idle because okay. you have the relative wind kind of pushing on the prop. So I'm going to slowly increase the back pressure. One, two rolls of trim initially. Slow the airplane down. Keep pulling the nose up. And right when it hits about the horizon, 60 knots, I'm going to add a little bit of power right there. And I'm going to have the airplane right at about 55 knots. I'm going to add a little bit of nose up trim. Looks like I've got four rolls of nose up trim into it so far. I've got my right foot on the rudder. I'm maintaining that airspeed. Power for altitude. And you can see outside, look at my pitch attitude. And that cowling is just right above the horizon. And it's holding almost perfect here at 55. Right on my altitude, 2500. On my heading, I can kind of see my point out there, but it's somewhat blocked. All right. So to recover, it's going to be really simple. I'm going to add full power, and I'm going to reduce the angle of attack as I accelerate. All right. So okay. full power here. Right rudder. Lower the nose. I'm accelerating. Take some trim out. I want to accelerate and maintain my altitude. So I'll try not to climb and I'll try not to descend. And I'll end up taking all that trim back out. When I get to 85 knots, top of the white arc, I'll set that cruise power to 23. And I'm out of the maneuver. Nice. All right, your controls. I have Give me a clearing turn back to the right, 180 degrees to a heading of west. Okay. And we'll clear the area while we're doing that. Hotel West Traffic got a skylock over the uh, eastern farm fields, 2,500 feet, turning westbound, slow flight. Cool. All right, I'm going to talk you through it. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. Heading a west, pick that lake way out there on the horizon. That'll be your point to fly to. Okay. I'm ready to go. Okay, so car heat goes on, power to 1,200, and then immediately start applying back pressure to keep the airplane from descending. You felt that uh, nose drag to the right there. That's that loss of all those left turning tendencies and the airplane tends to start to turn. One, two, and I'm looking for 55 knots here. Coming up to 60 knots. And you are descending quite a bit, so pull back on the stick. Trying to keep bit. it, I'm trying to keep oh, it down to my altitude. Up. Okay. All right, so now we're going to pull back. Add a little bit of power. 1900 RPM. Coming up, 1900 RPM. Back quickly, quick, quick. There you go. A lot of right rudder in there as you transition. Yep, I feel that. Okay, so I'm going to trim up a little bit. I'm going to pull back a little bit more to get my speed down. Pull a little power to keep the... Very small adjustment. Okay. I feel like we're stabilized for the most part. What pretty do you good. Think? Yeah, pretty good. All right, give me a right-hand turn to a heading in north. So we're going to add just a hair of power, maybe a couple hundred RPM, and then start making our right turn. Okay. At a shallow bank angle, no more than about shallow 15 degrees. And we kind of want to be looking into the turn. Because remember, we're slow. Everybody else flying around us is probably flying pretty quickly. And uh, they're going to come up on us pretty fast. There's that stall warner. Just lower the nose a little bit. Decrease the angle of attack when you hear it. Stalls don't actually scare me. Um... Oh yeah, there's the bush. I just felt the nose yeah. kind of do this. Yeah, feel that? Yeah. That's what I, like the plane is kind of wallowing, bushy, yeah. soft. What I want you to see is when the, when you start to slow down, you'll notice that you'll lose control effectiveness and the air, ailerons and the elevator and the rudder won't have as much effect. And it will do what's called, wa what I call wallowing. It kind of like, it's kind of very loose and uh, it kind of feels like you're not connected to the air as well. Call it what you will, but you know, it can be dangerous. It's, it, it's indicative of uh, a loss of control or possibly uh, getting close to the stall. Okay. So if you start feeling that on final, you know that you need to do something. Because really, we're only five knots below our final approach speed here. So this right. is about how the controls are going to behave when we're coming into land. Right. It's going to feel like this. And if we start hitting wind shear, mechanical turbulence, 
thermals, it's going to get a little messy and you're going to have to do some pretty extreme control movements to keep the airplane stable. All right, so that's a pretty good demo. I want you to go ahead and recover straight ahead. Okay. Full power. And simultaneously lower the nose. Trim out some pressure because there's a lot of it. Yep. Nice job. Right, and back down to 2300 RPM. All right, give me a right hand turn to a heading up east. Stay at 2700 feet. Okay. Nice job clearing. Let's do another one. All right, you ready for some slow flight dirty with the flaps? Sure. Let's All do right. it. All right. My controls? You have the aircraft. I have the aircraft. I'll demonstrate. Okay. So to set up our slow flight dirty with full flaps, we're going to use carb heat. We're going to set the power to 1500 RPM. And I'm going to put flaps 10 immediately, slowing to the white arc. I'm going to actually have to relax the back pressure to keep it from climbing as I add 10 degrees of flaps, because the airplane will do what we call, uh, try to, it will try to balloon a little bit. All right, full flaps incrementally. And I'm slowing to 50. There we are. Look how much power. I'm burying my right foot in. Got about 2,000 RPM. We got full flaps, flaps 40. Look outside. Do you feel that shake? Yeah. That's the turbulent airflow over the flaps. All right. So 50 knots. We're at about 2,100, 2,000 RPM-ish. I'm at 2,600 because I just bumped up a little bit uh, when I did that initial power increase. I'm going to relax my right rudder and do a turn to the left. I'm clearing left. Nice and gentle turn. Very shallow. Look how I'm on my standard rate marker on the turn coordinator. The plane is turning. Now, over the ground, I'm making a small turn because I'm just kind of floating. We're doing about 54 over the ground right now. So I don't have to, you know, turn that fast to still get three degrees per second here. Or turn that sharp to get three degrees per second. Now, because you're gaining this knowledge pretty quickly, I'll just do that short demonstration and we'll go ahead and run right into the recovery so you can take the controls and do it. So to recover from this maneuver, or to go around, or to recover from power off stall, full power, flaps at 20. Let the nose come down a little bit. I'm accelerating, 59 knots, which is VX, best, rate, best angle of climb. I'll put the flaps to 10, and allow the aircraft to continue to accelerate while maintaining altitude. Lowering the nose very slowly and methodically lifting the flaps up. As I take that last notch of flaps out, there's going to be a big drop. I'm going to have to pull back on the stick as the aircraft accelerates into a cruise airspeed. Set the power, 23. I'm still holding the nose up a little bit. And then a little bit of trim there to help me hold the nose up. You may have to trim down as you add flaps because it's increasing the angle of attack and the pitch moment is up. It'll try to pitch up on you. All right, so I'm going to get you back down to 2,500. Okay, we're on a heading up north. We're at 2,500 feet. I'm at cruise power, 95 knots. I'm going to turn this guy on the radio down so we can talk. You have the aircraft? I have the aircraft. And I'm going to talk you through it. Okay. All right, car beat on. Power to 1,500. Flaps immediately to 10. And just be cautious about that balloon. Feel that? Yep. That's why we want to make sure our power is right at 1,500 RPM. All right, and we lost a lot of airspeed there, so let's keep adding flaps. Incrementally, keep adding flaps. Quickly and incrementally. There we go, dump them. All right, 50 knots. Try to descend back down to 2,500 and then level off. and divide your attention between inside and outside. There's a lot to look at. And lead it with a little bit of power. And remember, we need about 2,000 RPM. We're getting a little slow there. 2,000, 2,100, add more power. Keep going, keep going, keep going. More power, right rudder. There we go. All right, relax the back pressure a little bit. Let it gain some speed. Car beat off. There you go, now you're getting stabilized. We're within about 40 feet of our altitude. 
We are at 50 knots, 2100 RPM. We are in slow flight dirty. Okay. That was a lot. It's All a at lot. once. It is. So next time, just try to set the power to 1500 first and establish that power setting. Then select flaps 10 so you don't balloon. Okay. And, and you will balloon a little bit still, so just try to fight it a little bit as you enter. And then when you hit the white arc, 20, 30, 40, 55 knots, add some power, stabilize at 50 knots. So this has been a taste of my lesson on slow flight. During each of our exercises, Derek demonstrated the first one, and then I did it twice. Uh, during those, I also did some turns, climbs, and descends to see how the aircraft performed during slow flight, and it was a lot different than in cruise flight. Please remember that these episodes are not for training. Editing, by its very nature, does remove context. But please feel free to open a dialogue with your own flight instructor regarding the topics you see in these videos. After we finished our slow flight training, we headed back to the airport and performed some touch and goes. Derek demonstrated the first one, and I did the next two. I'm, uh, I'm gonna need some more practice with landings, but we'll save that for another episode. All right, so that is it for this episode of Flight Review. Thank you so much for joining us. If we've earned your subscription, that would mean the world to us. And if you liked this video, go ahead and mash that like button down there. That really helps us out. And if you're feeling really generous, maybe you could share the word about this channel with some of your friends. That would be even better. Just, that would blow our minds. We hope you'll join us for the next video when I start to rack up a lot of landings. See you then.